Let's do another example of drawing the microstructure in a eutectic phase diagram as you cool it down from some composition. So let's take a look at alloy 1. That's the one that we just did. Alloy 1 is right here. As you cool it down, right there, since we're at the eutectic composition, there's a single temperature, and above that, you're basically pure liquid, and as soon as you go below that, you end up with the eutectic structure, where they're showing you that you've got eutectic alpha and eutectic beta. So again, this is your beta phase over here, pure tin. Um, it's not pure tin. It's actually 97.5% tin, right? You could draw the line over here, and it intersects right there. So at 97.5% tin, so it's almost pure tin. And then over here, you've got, not pure tin, you've got lead with almost 20% of the atoms are tin, right? So there's different solubility limits on both sides of this phase diagram, okay? So that's alpha and beta. What if you cool it down in this region over here, alloy two though? Alloy two, up here you've got pure liquid, right? And then when you reach point B on this graph, you form your very first solid. And the solid that forms, we could draw a little line over. The solid that forms over here is going to have, ah, uh, looks like maybe 15, uh, weight percent tin in the solution, okay? And then when you reach point C, point C, the liquid has changed composition. It's at about 50-50. The solid is also changed. It's about maybe, that's about 15. And then they say over here that you have 24% alpha, 76% liquid. How do they know that, right? How do they know that? Let's do the lever rule and calculate that ourselves and see if that's what we get. So for me, I see that this point is about 50 weight percent tin. I see that this point right here is about 15 weight percent tin. And so if we did the lever rule, we could figure out the weight percent of the alpha phase. So the weight percent of the alpha phase is going to be equal to, again, it's going to be the right-hand side of this line divided by the whole line. So the right-hand side is going to be 50 minus 40. So 50 minus 40 divided by the entire length of the line, which is going to be 50 minus 15. So that's 10 over 35. If we punch that into a calculator, we see that it is 28%. So again, we were eyeballing this, but we get about the same thing. They got 24% and we're getting 28%. So that's how you can use the lever rule to sort of sketch these things. You're showing that about 28% of the weight in this is these little globs that are floating. And then just above the eutectic point, they've drawn it at point D, it's about 50-50. We can tell it's about 50-50 because, take a look at this, this length of line from there to there and this length of line from there to there are about equal. So it's not surprising that it's about a 50-50 mixture over there. What about just below that line, right? Just below that line, things change. How does it change? Well, now you've got this length of line and this length of line, right? So which one is going to give us our weight percent alpha. It's going to be this length right there divided by the whole thing. So let's do it real quick. It's going to be 97.5 minus 40 over 97.5 minus 19.2. Let's punch that into our calculator really quick. 73.4%. So just below that point, just below the eutectic, 70, about 73% of our solid is going to be alpha phase. Okay, So that's how you can use the lever rule together with these diagrams to show the formation of what we call our pro-eutectic solid. Up here, the stuff that's forming, like this would be our pro-eutectic. We call it the pro-eutectic solid because it's the solid that forms before the eutectic reaction. Remember, the eutectic reaction is the one that happens along this flat line in the center here. That is our eutectic reaction. So any solid that forms before that point is pro-eutectic. And then, when you go through the reaction, everything that used to be liquid, this stuff, this dark blue phase here, that all turns into this lamellar structure because it undergoes the eutectic reaction. So we call that a mixture of eutectic alpha and beta, whereas this would be pro-eutectic alpha.